What's happening guys? Welcome to MMA for C UFC 292 Masacha said Boston. Here we got Sugar Shot O'Malley versus Al Jermaine Sterlings, aka Algio. So many of you guys know that the Sugar Shot it's from Boston. So it's gonna be a privilege for him to do the fight in his home. So before I get to the detail of this fight, I gotta say there are few couple things that happened in this UFC. The very first point is that while the Bruce Buffer is introducing the fighters, they never ever facing each other. So that was pretty new to the UFC. And the second one, if you check out the UFC Instagram account, they barely post any knockout moments of any fights in their Instagram. And if you check out the comments of the people on this specific post, so many people try to accuse the UFC that what's happening that you guys are posting this knockout moment. Is Sugar Sean your favorite fighter that you're trying to promote him this way? Or you hate Algios and try to destroy him this way? So anyway, let's get back to the fight and see what happened. Sean O'Malley's got a rank number two in the UFC and also the record of 16 wins and one loss. And he lost because of he got injured during the fight. And it's very clear that most of the people in arena are Sean O'Malley's fans. Obviously because the fight is in his city. And of course the arena was super packed. And based on what Dana White mentioned at the post-fight conference, the venue's name was TD Garden and also the seating capacity for the venue was 20,000 people at one time. As Dana White reported on the post-fight conference, it broke the record of selling the ticket at that arena, which was 7.24 million. It's good to know that the official revenue reported based on the pay-per-view at UFC 292 was 38 million dollars so 18.2 thousand people attended the fight and there were a total fights of 12 at that UFC 292 and based on the reported contracts the total payouts for Al Jamini's sellings was 1.29 million for this fight and for Sean O'Malley's the total payouts were 1.43 millions of dollars and on the other side Al Jamin Sterling with a record of 23 wins and 3 loss and he is the person who owns the UFC belt of the Bantamweight division. So stay with us to the end of this video I will tell you a lot of interesting points later on. They just touched the gloves and started the fight. Just try to remember the referee's face we're gonna talk about him later in this video. So Aljo started the fight by pressing Sean O'Malley and moving forward all the time. He was throwing a lot of low kicks to Sean, but the point is that Sean was escaping super smart. And technically he was not giving him a chance to get close to him to grab his legs. And again here, Aljo is going for a side kick, but see how smart Sean is passing it. See, he was trying to reach to his abs, to hit the abs, and was trying to extend his legs all the way. But he couldn't. Even he was trying to reach him by his heel was useless. Yeah, the Aljo was throwing a serious low kicks. See? So technically he was focusing on the kicks, low kick, calf kick, side kick. For those who may not know what is the difference between a low kick and a calf kick, I should say you can get it from the name. Calf kick are those kicks that you are hitting the calf from the inner side or outer side and of course low kicks are those kicks that you are hitting the legs right above the knee section and let me tell you those calf kick really hurts they are super super painful so now this is the time for Sean O'Malley just see as soon as Sean is trying to kick him look at the Aljo he's so ready to go for the takedown and that's a useless try. See again, Sean is escaping. And let's say in general, this is one of the points that Aljo tried to explain in the post-fight conference about Sean O'Malley. That he was doing an amazing job on his footworks. And technically, so many people predicted that the Aljo will take the Sean O'Malley's down and right away will go for the submission. And for sure, this is his fighting style. 
And this is the way that usually you just get the point from the opponents. And you can see these things happen over and over and over. This guy was on escape mode all the time. And of course, you know, we can say Aljo was completely right. He really worked on his footwork, how to escape from the takedown situation and preferred not to get involved with the takedown procedures and defense. So that's why the only option was left for the Aljo was the low kick. Those other kicks were ending in the air and not hitting him at all. End of the day, he didn't have any other choice rather than throwing a heavy low kick. And look, here, this is the Sean's time. He is going for an oblique kick right to the point. What is the point? That's a knee. See how he pushes the knee back. And of course, that's the joint. That's why Aljo is losing his balance. And that was a really heavy kick. Now only we have 38 seconds left to the end of the round one. And again, Aljamain is going for a side kick. Guess what? Yeah, Sean is escaping. So there's not much time left. That's why Aljo goes for the takedown. He's trying to take him down. But as you can see, he couldn't finish it properly. And of course, what you're going to do in 18 seconds left? The only thing is that you can just gain some points by throwing some punch and try to finish the round one. Yeah, by getting some scores out of the punches. And again, at the very end, he's trying to see if he can lift him up. But again, he failed and he couldn't. Nothing specific happened in round one. And now we're going for the round two. Again, Aljamain started the round two by low kick. Same, same, same strategy as the round one. This time, he's trying the high kick. But again, unfortunately, he couldn't reach his face. And right after, in response, Sean's trying to throw a front kick. But this time, Sean loses balance and boom! And he tries to get up right away. I believe Aljo should have gone for the takedown right away before throwing the punch. That could give him a lot more chance to keep him on the ground. Just see one more time. See, he's kind of wasting the time. And the, probably, you know, he thought that it's going to be a better strategy. But in the end of the day, he tried to finish this move. And they end up to the cage wall. Now he's trying to control him. So now, see, there are a few interesting points. Let's talk about them. First of all, is at the very beginning of the round two. And, you know, he got around four minutes something. So that makes sense for him to go at the back of Sean and pull him down. And everybody knows that this is his expertise and his strategy all the time. Surprisingly, he couldn't do anything. And Sean was resisting and defending very well. Of course, he's been working on his takedown defense. But what Sean mentioned in the post-fight conference, because he had an injury on his ribs, he couldn't do any sort of grappling for past six weeks. Regardless, it shows that he's been working on the grappling no matter what. That's clear because it's not his fighting style. You can see easily, you know, how they position their legs. Usually, Aljamain tried to roll his legs around the legs of the opponent. But the way that Sean is positioning his legs, it shows that he's pretty confident and stable. And clearly, Aljamain cannot do anything. See how smart Sean is lifting his legs as soon as Aljo is going for his leg. Yeah, this is pretty clear. He's been working hard on it. Timing is what matters and this is what Sean is doing pretty well. Because he knows it's his leg get locked by Aljo's legs. He's done. He has no other choices. And in continue, you can see how smart Sean is trying to get out of this situation. So now he's trying to control the aljamain and now after that, he's trying to take his right hand out. And what he's going to do right after, it's pretty smart. And of course, again, he's been working on it. He's trying to grab Algeo's face, turn and pull it outwards. This way, he's giving himself the chance to come out of this block. He's almost free to go, but no. His right leg still is locked. But that sound is not a big deal for Sean. He's taking his legs easily out. Could be the reason somehow that, you know, he got some sort of skinny leg or if you don't want to use the term skinny, would say it's not as thick. Aljo's that C doesn't have any other choices. 
So you start throwing a punch. Those were good punches. Yeah, pretty good. But now Sean is completely free. And now we're getting close to the main point of this fight. Technically, all these recent moves made Algios somehow ready to continue the fight with more aggression. And again, we can see a front kick from Sean. This way, he tried to hit and in the meantime, keep the space. And right away, Algios felt this is a good moment to attack. That looks a little bit confusing for Sean because he's not sure if Algio is going for a takedown, punch or kick. Sterling is thinking what to do and finally he decides to go for a huge jab. But unfortunately he couldn't reach his face and right away as soon as he decides to go for a right hook, it's kinda late for him. Sean goes for an amazing overhand and that's it. Let's review a few more time and see Algios fell down. Such a super easy knockdown, but that's not the end of the story. And again, another smart move by Sean O'Malley, as you can see, he tries to stop and not jumping right away to continue the punch because he's afraid if Algio is going to grab his leg. And as soon as he feels he's knocked down completely, he starts his hammer punches back and forth, left and right, right and left. See, Algio's trying to up kick Sean but he couldn't also he was trying somehow to grab the Sean's legs but he couldn't again and the fun point here is that the referee looks so excited <laughs> and somehow he's having fun and see as soon as Aldius turned the referee stopped the fight and the fight is finished so many people were surprised and kind of shocked that what's happening there why the referee just stopped the fight probably he could somehow get up and continue the fight. Condition doesn't sound too bad, to be honest, for the referee to stop the fight. And Algios mentioned at the post-fight conference that I was shocked somehow that why the fight is stopped, why the fight is finished. Right away, the referee is trying to check on him whether he has his conscious or not. He's asking him, do you know in which state are we tonight? And he answered, definitely I know that we're not in Vegas. He continues that I haven't been in Boston and Massachusetts for a while or never been fighting there. It was not in my mind at that very moment. And again, right after, the referee is asking, do you know which year are we in? And he's saying, come on, bro, this is 2023, of course. And he continues that, bro, I feel pretty fine. I'm pretty good. Let's have a look one more time on the slow-mo and see what happened. Just pay attention here. In the meantime that Sean is trying to somehow escape his head, he's preparing his right hand to go for a huge powerful overhand. And right before Algios goes for a hook with his right, he is closing his eyes subconsciously. That kind of shows he's expecting the overhand. But sadly, the body's reaction is not as quick as the eye's reaction. It was too late and he didn't have any other choice other than welcome the punch to his face. See once again. And now, boom! No matter what, we gotta be fair about this. Sean was fighting super smart, like very smart next level. The way that he's pretty patient, doing the proper footwork, timing, everything. Algio was hoping to go for that right hook, but that never happened. Seriously, that was super heavy and powerful overhand by Sean O'Malley. Sounds like this is his style. He's been doing this for a while, so many times. And definitely, if you go check out the other fights of Sean O'Malley's, you will see pretty much same story. It's happening over and over. So many people were saying that the referee shouldn't stop the fight. He had a chance to get up and continue the fight. But we should consider this fact that Sean was pretty confident on his position. He could easily continue the hammer punches. For example, Sabib commented that uh, that's a new champion on the Bantamweight division. Uh, that was a good finish. Timing was good. And apparently he didn't believe that the referee stopped the fight too fast. And as usual, Israel Adesanya was saying that I was expecting this. I could predict that. But I never seen Ven and Ver. He says his predictions. And Valishvili was saying that again, the referee stopped the fight pretty quick. Hopefully he would never judge my fight. 
I want to show you a good learning point what Sean did. See, while Sean is standing on his stack guard and controlling properly and throwing the punch back and forth, in less than a second he feels like Algios is going to grab his legs and he knows that Algios is very good in submission. So that's why Super Smart is trying to get out of this position and is not giving him a chance to grab the leg. The point is that Algio was not in a proper consciousness. Still, Sean didn't want to risk it and give a chance to Algio to grab his leg and go for the submission. And that's why I'm saying he's very smart. See how Sean is trying to turn around him and Algio is trying to follow Sean, but still Sean is dominant. And somehow he convinced the referee to stop and finish the fight. Anyways, earlier we predicted that there is a 70% chances of Algio finishing the fight and win the fight. We had certain number of people that they predicted Sean O'Malley is going to knock Algios out and will win the fight. This is exactly what Sugar Sean O'Malley was predicting earlier and he said, I'm going to knock him out. And another point is that lots of the fans and the people in the arena were making noise against the Algios as usual. In reverse, they were supporting Sean O'Malley's big time. So that's kind of obvious because uh, Boston, it's his home. Okay, so now let's go to the stats and see what are the stats for this fight. UFC 296. Aljamain Sterling and Sean O'Malley. So briefly, we're going to review these numbers. The total strike for Aljamain was 24 and for Sean O'Malley was 26. And the significant strikes for Aljo was 17 versus Sean O'Malley had 25 significant strikes. And interestingly, there is no significant or real takedown on this fight which shows how nicely Sean O'Malley was managing the fight. Sugar Sean O'Malley, not the sugar daddy, but <laughs> 16 wins, 1 loss, and 12 knockouts. And he has finished 9 people at the very first round. So if we check his fight records and history, beside the fact that he could TKO Aljamain Sterling, he has lost one of his fights, and the person who tried to win over him, Vera could beat him in the fight and be the winner of that fight. Which now, both are trying to challenge each other and definitely it's some trash talking. Anyways, something which is really interesting is that most of the time, he is knocking out his opponents and this is a valuable point. That was completely far from mind to predict he is going to knock out Aljamain Sterling. And once again, on the post-fight conference, Aljamain somehow was expecting a rematch because he feels like, you know, he deserved to have it based on his fight history, fight records and things like that. Well, there would and could be the chances, but not directly and right away. Probably he has to go through some fights and then after, yeah, I think that could be possible. And definitely that's going to be an amazing fight, even better than what we saw. Because there's like two things. Uh, first of all, the people and the fans were somehow booing him big time. And of course, uh, he didn't have a chance to show his wrestling and grappling skills. And wish the referee was not stopping and finishing the fight that early. Anyways, this is what it is. And the good point is that Algio mentioned another guy chased his own dream. And that's why Sugar Sean O'Malley now is the owner of the built in the Bantamweight division. In the US, the majority was predicting that Sean O'Malley is going to win the fight. And yeah, Sugar Sean could finish the kingdom of Algio. The person who was beating all the opponents back to back for so long, owning the UFC bantamweight divisions built. And we cannot ignore the fact that the Aljamain Sterling is a very good fighter no matter what. And that's the nature of the fight, which no one could ever guarantee who is going to win the fight. And of course that really matters, which both fighters study and analyze each other's fight history. 
which clearly we can see Shugishan O'Malley has done a great job on studying and analyzing the Aljamain Sterling's skills in previous fights, as well as timing, which was one of the most important point of his fighting skills this time. Uh, so many people tried to just make these animations meme for exactly the moment that Sean O'Malley it's going for the overhand. This time, both fighters had a different color. Alju was in green and the Shugishan was in pink. These memes and animations are looking pretty cool. Yes. And after, I'm going to show you another interesting and funny points of the fans that Full House, they were supporting Shugishan O'Malley See, there's one guy among all these fans, the all-time poker face guy, which his facial mimics is always locked and you can't read anything from that. Alex Ferreira, he's always like that and I have no idea why. Also, I'm gonna share another super new news with you guys. And Sean O'Malley has challenged Davis. Oh my god. Davis is the boxer who beat it Ryan Garcia a while ago. And now Sean O'Malley feels like he's super good in boxing. So that's why he's trying to challenge this guy. But this is such a funny recent trend happening recently among the UFC fighters that as soon as they feel like they are good. In boxing, they start challenging the famous boxers for a boxing match. And we all know the fact that the anime is absolutely different from the boxing. Two different world. Also, I would love to share my personal ideas and analysis about this fight. Unfortunately, the fight didn't go the way that I was predicting. And uh, for sure, Aljamain lost the game. And I was thinking maybe, you know, it's going to just take five rounds and it's going to be a lot of wrestling, grappling, takedown. And definitely I was thinking that uh, Aljamain is going to finish him by submission. But as I said before, fight is not predictable and that's the beauty of fight. And exactly something happened that barely I could predict it and expect in it. We got to accept this fact. Aljamain is super good on the ground for the jiu-jitsu and submission but that doesn't mean that he's a super pro wrestler but definitely he's above average and um, he can finish the job and let's say he can get the job done at some point but you can easily see a person who doesn't have any specific wrestling background like Sean O'Malley he was trying to block him and not letting him take him down and we're talking about the guy who beat Peter Yan and Henry Sudo the two fighters who knows wrestling very well but as soon as you're facing to such an accurate punch that's the time that probably your wrestling skills couldn't talk and you can't do anything so to review all these points quickness footworks agility power speed and of course punching skills this could result in winning the fight as easy as pie I would love to know your idea about the rematch. Would that happen sometime soon or not? Please write down your idea in the comments and I would definitely read them. Also considering this fact that Sean O'Malley is standing in a position that he almost beat so many different type of fighters. Those fighters that are doing a great job on standing and striking as well as the fighters who are doing great job on the ground. That's why somehow we can say this fact that he won't be an easy opponent for any type of fighter. Long story short, I would say definitely he deserved to own the belt in the bantamweight division. For those who really want to see the full fight, they can easily go down and find the telegram link here and just watch the whole fight in our telegram channel. Thanks for supporting us. Thanks for watching this video to the end. We definitely would be happy to read your comments, critics or anything you guys like to share with us. Once again, thanks for watching us. See you soon.